beep, 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 beep. Right, here we go. This is a good one. Become a warrior teacher. Sign up. As a just right. You can see the join thing down below you. Um, buy me a coffee if you can. Buy me a beer. The usual stuff, you know. So click subscribe. Please share this if you can. It's great to see you for those who have just, uh, uh, just discovered me. Um, it, come on board, you know. We're having a ball. And we're sad at times as well. We have a ball. We're sad. It's just the way it is. So thank you very much for watching. I'm in America today. Oh, say can you see? Right? With a great article from November the 16th by Pamela Paul, opinion piece in the New York Times, that was brought to my attention by the rather lovely Fred Sargent, uh, erstwhile veteran of the gay rights movement in the USA. Thank you very much, Fred, for your work and your history and pointing this article out so I can do a YubiTubes, right? Oh, YubiTubes. <laughs> So here we go, right? Progressives aren't liberal. This is this is a cracking piece, by the way. Remember when liberal was a dirty word in the 1980s? Ronald Reagan, who often prefaced it with a damning tax and spend. The tax, oh, the tax and spend liberals, as Reagan would say. Oh. <laughs> May have been the most effective of liberal bashers. But the most blatant attack was in the early 90s after Newt Gingrich's... Gingrich's Gingrich's political organisation, GOPAC, sent out a memo, language, a key mechanism of control, urging fellow Republicans to use the words as a slur. It worked. Even Democrats began avoiding the dread level. In a presidential, prim presidential, pr in a presidential primary debate in 2007, Hillary Clinton called herself instead a modern progressive. She avoided the term liberal again in 2016. Now the word is back. They told, the American people told um, Gallup pollsters, they were liberal. And this has increased from 17% in 1992 to 25% in 2021, still lower than the proportion of those who said they were conservatives or moderates. Remember, folks, those of you watching in the UK, which is the majority of you, none of these terms mean the same in America as they do here. You know, so if you want to understand what they mean by conservative and liberal in America, you're going to have to have a look and see what the American definition is, because it's not the same as ours, not even vaguely close, right? So it's important that you understand the differentiation. By, but the way liberal is being used now is more confounding than ever. Never, never Trump conservatives toot, tout their bona fides as liberals in the classic 19th century sense of the word, in part to distinguish themselves from hard right Trumpists. Others use liberal and progressive interchangeably, even as what progressivism means in practice today is often anything but liberal or even progressive for that matter. You see the confusion here around this terminology. For those of us who have never abandoned the term, why let Republicans define us? Liberal values, many of them, the products, this is what, when I talk about liberal values, we're pretty much here. Liberal values, <clears throat> Many of them products of the Enlightenment include individual liberty, freedom of speech, scientific inquiry, separation of church and state, due process, racial equality and women's rights, human rights and democracy. Unlike classic liberals, i.e. usually conservatives, liberals do not see government as the problem, but rather as a means to help the people it serves. Liberals fiercely defend Social Security, Medicare, Medicaid, Obamacare, the Voting Rights Act and the National Labour Relations Act. They believe government has a duty to regulate commerce for the benefits of its citizens. They tend to be suspicious of large corporations and their tendency to thwart the interests of workers and consumers. As recently as the 2000s, the difference between liberals and progressives was often a matter of degree. Obamacare versus Medicare for all. Or increasing the top marginal tax rate versus imposing a wealth tax. But while liberalism's most strenuous threat comes from the Trumpian right, a split over basic principles and the pur purpose of the left has been widening. This is terribly interesting because although there, the terminology and the, uh, the sort of field for learning here, the ontological field, is one of American politics and the definitions of these words in American politics, this same split is occurring in the UK too, right? Because I, I would say that I'm a classical liberal. Uh, I, I expect the government to do certain things, but I expect it to be utterly minimised because they're bad at doing most things. So I'm very small state, small state, personal responsibility, <clears throat> everything that comes with that, right? In an increasingly prominent vision of the progressive vision, capitalism isn't something to be regulated or balanced,
but is itself the problem. White supremacy doesn't describe an extremist fringe of racist and anti-Semites, but is instead the inherent character of the nation. This is the darkness of the progressive left and their vicious grievance narratives. That's what we're seeing here. Fascinating. Some aspects of <clears throat> contemporary progressivism look less like actual progress and more like a step in reverse. Again, here we can see the commonalities between what's going on in the UK, where groups like Don't Divide Us Now are providing a bulwark against the very worst of these race baiters, and what's happening in America with the following statement. Whereas liberals hold to a vision of racial integration, progressives have increasingly supported forms of racial distinction and separation, and demanded equity in outcome rather than equality of opportunity. Whereas most liberals want to advance equality between the sexes, many progressives seem fixated on reframing gender stereotypes as gender identity and denying sex differences wherever they confer rights or protections expressly for women. And whereas liberals tend to aspire towards a universalist ideal in which diverse people come together across shared interests, progressives seem increasingly wedded to an identitarian approach that emphasises tribalism over the attainment of common ground. Fascinating also in the regions and areas I've been looking at with the warrior teachers in the last few weeks, in particular groups talking about the difference, the difference between the collectivist and the collaborative approach, the, the difference between a, a movement that is based upon a collectivist ideology and a movement that is about a collaborative approach to a common aim. <clears throat> the volatility of those movements, which we can see. So collectivist ideas, you know, Deutschland, Deutschland, Uber, ah, this is all that bloody nonsense in it with Herr Adolf and all that. Or it's, you know, Chairman Mao Mao Mao, Mao 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 Mao, or any of the other lunatic ideologies that have become and tipped towards murderous, um, uh, murderous behaviours because of equity or equality of outcome, which is what the progressives are supporting. What's progressive about that? There's nothing progressive about it. Equity is murderous. It's quite simple. So when you get that kind of Collective, ooh, brah, let's who do we have, who do we have, you know, all that business, right? When you get that collective nonsense and everybody's like, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, I'm blinded to everything else, it's just the ideology, that's your problem. Well, that collectivism is what we're fighting against. Whereas with collaboration, you've got people coming together because that needs stopping, and now we've got to deal with that. Well, then the group will split and it'll go off and start dealing with something else. But no, no, that's nothing to do with me, I'm going over and doing this. So the volatility of the collaborative side of it, which is what we are, is what often causes people to go, hang on a minute, why can't we all just get along? We don't need to. Right, we just need to agree what's the bad bit and then go for it, okay? It's a great article, this, illustrating this, this type of uh, collaborative work that is being done here. Um, so, uh, more reactionary still, they continue about the progressive, is the repressive nature of progressive ideals around civil liberties. It is progressives, not liberals, who argue that speech is violence and that war words cause harm. These values are the driving force behind progressive efforts to shut down public discourse, disrupt speeches, tear down posters, censor students, and deplatform those with whom they degree, uh, they disagree. Get it right? Go and have a look. It's a great article. It goes on much further than that. It's um, in the New York Times, and I, it's well worth reading. It's a perspective from America, but I do recommend that anybody from anywhere read it. It's a fine article that illustrates that we have a problem with progressives, not liberals. OK, so go and, you know, let me know what you think in the comments as usual. What does it mean for you to be progressive? I think these people are regressive. I think they're dangerous to our society. And I think that they should be hounded out of their jobs. There you go. Let's get them out of the civil service where they're hiding and the HR departments where they're hiding and the classrooms where they're hiding. Get them out. Get them out. And the sooner that we do it, the better. Um, we aren't going to be able to because you're going to get a Labour government. And if you think it's bad now, you have no idea what's coming around the corner. All right. Oh dear. Yeah, don't look at me. Don't shoot the messenger. <laughs> I'll see you later.